Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Sorry about the delay on this video but here I am back with episode 5 in the Piper Aero 3 series. Now hope everyone is enjoying the sim update 5. Uh, some really good performance improvements there. I did see a lot of people running into issues but I think an update is going to be out soon that will fix most of the issues that you guys are seeing. So some really good response by Asobo Studios there. Now firstly thank you all for the support on these videos. I've been seeing my subscriber count slowly creep up and I'm more motivated than ever to crank out some really good content for you guys. Now if you're watching this video and enjoying the content on this channel please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps. Now on to today's topic. I'm going to talk about the pitostatic system. I'll include the vacuum system in a separate bonus video because pitostatic system itself has quite a lot to cover. The knowledge that you will gain in this episode can be applied to pretty much any general aviation airplanes and there will be stuff that is applicable to aviation as a whole. So this will be a fun little episode. I'm going to structure this episode a little differently. I'll go over the basics that you need to know first. Uh, this part will include some general easy physics that is important to know in order to understand the pitostatic system. And then I will talk about the instruments in the cockpit that get their information from the pitostatic system along with how it all works. Let's start from the basics about this system. The pitot and static probes are located here below the wing on our aircraft. On some airplanes like the Cessna 172, the pitot tube is located below the wing and static port is separate located on the side as shown on the figure here. Now the pitot tube measures total pressure. Total pressure is simply an addition of static pressure and dynamic pressure. Static pressure is the pressure that an object experiences when placed in space with zero relative flow velocity. If you place an object at sea level versus let's say 10,000 feet, it will experience different static pressures because we know that air density reduces as we go higher from the sea level and the static pressure decreases with it as well. Here is a plot of static pressure versus altitude for your reference. Now dynamic pressure also called as velocity pressure is the pressure that an object experiences due to the relative flow velocity around it. The equation for dynamic pressure is half rho v square where rho is the fluid density and v is the relative velocity. So dynamic pressure you can say is directly proportional to the relative flow velocity and the fluid density. Now combining what we just talked about, pitot tube basically measures total pressure or also called as stagnation pressure which is P0 that is the static pressure plus half rho v square which is the dynamic pressure term. I hope that clears everything about the pressures we will be talking about in this video uh, when we go through the instruments. It is really important to have the pitot tube facing clean air so you'll see that it is always installed further from the prop. We don't want the pressure measurement being affected by the prop wash. Then we have the static port which measures the static pressure also called as barometric pressure. We already talked through what static pressure is. The port is placed perpendicular to the flow like we saw before so that it does not capture any dynamic pressure component. The pressures obtained from both pitot tube and static port are used to provide pilots with some really valuable information in the cockpit like we'll see. Let's talk about which instruments use this and how the pressure measurements are translated to some useful information for the pilot. Starting off with the instruments that need the pitostatic system to operate, we have the airspeed indicator, altitude indicator and the vertical speed indicator. The airspeed indicator shows the speed of our aircraft relative to the air around it, which is also called as indicated airspeed. It uses both total pressure and static pressure from the pitostatic probes to determine the speed either mechanically or electronically. Talking about how it is done electronically, let's go back to the equations again. In the total pressure equation, we have the total pressure from the pitot tube, static pressure from the static port. So the only unknown in our equation would be dynamic pressure which is half rho v square. Now we know how the density changes with altitude. So that is a known variable too. 
which means the only unknown variable would be the relative velocity. That is how the indicated airspeed is determined electronically. Easy and interesting, right? The Aero 3 does it all mechanically. I'll leave a video link down below in the description that explains how mechanical airspeed indicators work. Now, there's different kind of speeds that you can talk about. There's indicated airspeed, there's true airspeed, ground speed. But let's leave that for a separate video and move on to the next instrument. Next is the altimeter. This gauge shows us the altitude we are flying at. This again works mechanically in the Aero 3, but let's look at how you can know the altitude from the static pressure information. Going back to the altitude versus static pressure curve, if the static port measures a certain amount of static pressure, it can be plotted on this curve and you'll know the respective altitude. So basically all you have to do is calibrate the static pressure values to altitude values. You might have heard about pilots adjusting QNH every time before a flight and even during flights. QNH is basically the current static pressure measured in that area at sea level. All the aircrafts in that area must calibrate their altimeters to the same QNH value below 18,000 feet. This is important so that all the airplanes are reading and reporting the altitudes based on a common reference pressure which is QNH of that area. The third and final gauge we have in the cockpit that uses static pressure information is the VSI or Vertical Speed Indicator. This gauge shows how fast or slow the aircraft is climbing or descending. VSI is directly attached to the static line and there is a separate input to the casing which is a calibrated leak from the static line as shown in this figure here. There is a diaphragm that is attached to the gears that move the needle and the needle shows you the vertical speed. Now when we are climbing, the static pressure reduces and thus the pressure inside the diaphragm decreases instantly. But the casing sees the reduction in static pressure late because the leak to the casing from the static port is a slow calibrated leak. This means the diaphragm would shrink and it shows us that we are climbing. Same concept goes for when we are descending, the only thing that changes then is that the diaphragm would expand due to the increase in static pressure, while the casing pressure would increase very slowly through that calibrated leak. When the VSI needle is moving, remember that it only shows the direction, whether you are climbing or descending. But when it stabilizes on a value, it shows you the rate at which you are climbing or descending. Hope that helps you folks have a clear understanding of the vertical speed indicator. To summarize it all, pitot tube measures total pressure and static port measures static pressure. Total pressure is static pressure plus dynamic pressure. Dynamic pressure is basically one half rho v square. The airspeed indicator, altimeter and the vertical speed indicator use the pressures measured by pitot tube and static port to operate. Airspeed indicator uses both of them, while altimeter and vertical speed indicator uses only the static pressure to provide altitude and v-speed information to the pilot. So that concludes the pitot-static system overview for our aircraft. Hope you had a great time learning about it and you are excited for the next episode which is going to be a full cockpit panel guide for the Piper Aero 3. I am going to have a blast making that video and I hope you enjoy watching it just as much. If you are enjoying this series and learning something new, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel so that you are not missing out on any future content. Don't forget to leave a comment down below if you have any feedback, questions, corrections or video requests. It helps me a lot and the channel more than you think. Thank you again for stopping by and watching this video and see you on the next one. Stay safe, stay healthy and stay kind.